Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. My name is Nandini. I'm a senior tech support executive at 42 Gears. 42 Gears offers a wide range of mobility solutions for enterprises to help increase workforce productivity and secure corporate data. Today, we'll be talking about how to achieve a perfect lockdown in Android using Sherlock to ensure maximum productivity of our devices. Before we start, I would request you to drop any questions you may have during the presentation in the question box. I'll answer them at the end of the webinar. Sherlock offers ways to lock down your device, turn it into kiosk, restrict user access, and is supported on several platforms such as Android, iOS, and Windows. Today, I will be covering only Sherlock for Android. Sherlock Android offers more than 300 options using which you can customize your UI lockdown, manage applications, and configure device peripherals. Sherlock has everything an enterprise needs to lock down its business devices. But sometimes users can get overwhelmed by its many configurations and miss out on the rich features of the app. Today, I will bring to your attention some important configurations of Sherlock, an Android system that might be very essential for your deployment. If some of these settings are not configured properly, there are chances that the lockdown provided by Sherlock can be compromised. And you don't want that to happen, right? Everyone wants the lockdown to be foolproof and at the same time, it should ensure a streamlined business process. <clears throat> to achieve the most secure lockdown, I have broadly classified all important checkpoints into two major categories. First one is device or Android level checks. Second one is application or short lock level checks. I'll first discuss the Android level checks and then proceed with Sherlock level checks. <clears throat> the first and foremost point is to grant all essential Android permissions to Sherlock necessary for initiating any lockdown or cures deployment. In most of the devices, granting these permissions is a manual procedure. But if you're using enterprise agent signed with the platform certificate, by your OEM, you can automate this instead of doing them manually. First configuration to keep in mind is to grant app usage access to Sherlock. You will be prompted to grant this permission to Sherlock on first launch of Sherlock. This permission ensures that the watchdog feature of Sherlock works as expected on the devices that are running on Lollipop OS or later versions of Android. If your device has KitKat or lower versions of Android, then this step is not required. For the purpose of this demo, I have shared the screen of an Android device, which will help you understand the working of Sherlock features better. I will show you how to navigate to the app use it access feature we were discussing a few minutes ago. If you can see on the device, I have, I will navigate to settings application and will further navigate to security option. Here, the bottom of the screen, I have the option apps with usage access. I will click on it and you can see Sherlock listed there. I will click on Sherlock and permit the permissions. I will go back to device home screen. <clears throat> I will discuss later why Watchdog is an essential lockdown feature provided by Sherlock. For now, just remember that on all Lollipop and above versions of Android, always grant the app user access to Sherlock for full-fledged lockdown. Similar to app usage access permissions, there is another permission that needs to be granted to help Sherlock pull down 
a proper lockdown on the devices. <clears throat> this permission is device administrator permission and is required for all Android devices. Making Sherlock as device administrator ensures that Sherlock cannot be directly uninstalled using ADB or any rogue application on the device. These permissions also help admin block the launch of unallowed applications on Sherlock home screen and disable safe mode, about which we will elaborate later in this session. Going back to the device screen, you can see the steps to navigate to the setting. I will again launch the settings application, navigate to security once again, and here you will see the option device administrators. I will click on it and check the option for Sherlock and activate the device administrator. There, you have granted the device administrator permissions to Sherlock. <coughs> When Sherlock is installed and launched on the device, it is mandatory to set Sherlock as the default home screen to initiate the lockdown process. You can do this by tapping on Sherlock and then tapping on Always when prompted. Sherlock cannot initiate any kind of lockdown until this requirement is met. It is always advised to reboot the device and verify that the lockdown persists after reboot. Reboot also clears the recent history and removes default Android launcher from background apps, which will give you a better lockdown experience. If you look at the screen now, you can see that I am going to click on Sherlock application, which was pre-installed on the device. Here, you're navigated to OK Got It prompt. Now, I will click on OK Got It button here, I am getting a prompt to set a default launcher for the device. It shows Sherlock. I will click on Always. Sherlock has now taken over the device as a kiosk application. You, you can see that you will not be able to pull down the status bar or access any other settings of the device. <clears throat> Moving ahead. We have discussed some of the mandatory checks of the device level. We will further proceed with application level checks. As mentioned earlier, Sherlock has several configurations and amongst them, there are a few important ones which if neglected may not support Sherlock to properly lock down the device. One such point is allowing at least one launchable application on Sherlock home screen if an application is not allowed on Sherlock home screen, it will show you ways to get password prompt and ways to import settings on the device. This way, the end user may import default settings on the device and hence successfully break the lockdown of the device. On the device screen, if you notice, I am currently on Sherlock home screen. I will show you the steps necessary to add an application Sherlock home screen. I will tap five times on the device home screen to get a password prompt and click and enter the default password which is double zero double zero. I will click on OK. Sherlock has its own admin settings. To access the admin settings, we have this mechanism. Now, I will click on Allowed Applications list and click on Add App button. Here, I will search for Settings application. This is nothing but System Settings application of the device. I will click on Done. I will again click on Add App to add another application. I will try to add Calendar as an application. I have selected calendar and I will click on done to save the changes.
Now on Sherlock home screen, you can see two applications which were allowed in the allowed application list. <clears throat> if you recollect earlier, we discussed that it was important to give app usage access permission to Sherlock Watchdog. Once you enable Watchdog in Sherlock, it will restrict the users from accessing restricted applications through an allowed application. For example, if Watchdog service is not enabled and camera is the only allowed application, users can launch gallery using gallery option in the camera screen. Apart from blocking the users from accessing unallowed applications and child window activities, Watchdog can also control the rotation settings, bright night settings, etc. on the Sherlock home screen. To show you the steps on the device, you can see that I'm currently on Sherlock home screen. Using the steps mentioned earlier, I will navigate to the admin settings of Sherlock and then to Sherlock settings. I will tap five times on Sherlock home screen to get the password prompt and enter the default password, which is 0000. I will click on OK and navigate to Sherlock settings. Here, I will navigate to Watchdog services. You can see that this option is, is checked by default. It is enabled by default. Going ahead, I would like to discuss Sherlock password, which is a very basic and crucial step while configuring Sherlock. In Sherlock, if you tap five times on device screen, it will give you a password prompt in which you can enter the Sherlock admin pass password. The default password of Sherlock is 0000, which of course is a well-known fact. Therefore, it is very important to change this password of Sherlock to make sure the end user does not enter into Sherlock settings or meddle with the settings. Please make sure the password is strong and not easily predictable by the end user. Using device password for Sherlock is not suggested. On the device, you can see that I'm currently on Sherlock home screen and I will navigate to admin settings of Sherlock by entering the default password. I will now click on Sherlock settings and navigate to change password option. I will click on OK, got it. And here I can enter the old password which is 0000, enter the new password and confirm. Once this is done, the password on Sherlock will be changed. For demo purposes, I am keeping the password as 0000. It is also recommended to increase the number of tabs on Sherlock home screen, which is five by default. This option will be available in miscellaneous settings of Sherlock settings on the device. Moving ahead, <clears throat> the next important feature I will discuss is Lock Safe Mode. Safe Mode is a diagnostic mode in Android and is widely used to get rid of rogue softwares in the device. When the device is running in Safe Mode, it allows only essential system programs and services to start at boot. However, the security feature for devices can be used against Sherlock to compromise the lockdown of the device. Sherlock has a fix for this, and it is to lock the safe mode with strong password. Therefore, when the device is running with Sherlock and try to boot into safe mode, device comes up with password from, and on entering the password, only allows the end user to log into safe mode. In the next option, I would like to emphasize on the impact of USB debugging on Sherlock. The primary function of USB debugging mode is to facilitate a connection between an Android device and a computer to help the user get a better level of access to the device. This mode also allows transfer of files to and fro via USB to the device storage. This feature can pose a risk to Sherlock as Sherlock APK and Sherlock settings file will be present in the device storage. Therefore, it is important to disable this feature on the device. 
Once disabled, the device storage will not be exposed to the end user after connecting the USB to the device. Next point I would like to discuss would be allowing system settings as an allowed application in Sherlock. Android system settings menu allows you to control most aspects of your device. Everything from establishing a new Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection, adjusting system sounds and screen brightness, granting permissions to newly installed applications, installing and uninstalling the applications, basically everything. When this application is allowed as a launchable application in Sherlock, as mentioned earlier, end user can very well disable Sherlock from the device storage. If you can see on the screen now, I will show you the possible ways to disable Sherlock using system settings. We have already, we already have allowed settings as a allowed application in Sherlock home screen from one of our previous steps. So now I will click on it and launch the application. Once it is launched, I will navigate to apps and select Sherlock. Here, I will be navigating to the apps option. Here, you can see that Sherlock is listed. I will click on Sherlock, go to open by default option and clear defaults. Once done, I will click on home button and there you can see a prompt to choose the default launcher for the device. And, in, and if in any case the end user chooses anything else apart from Sherlock, the lockdown on the device will be compromised. Please note that system app application icon is also available in status bar of the device. There are certain ways to avoid the situation. First one would be not to allow the system settings application in Sherlock. And if there is a dire need, to allow this application, you can hide the application icon or you can use our inbuilt manager apps such as Bluetooth manager, Wi-Fi manager, brightness manager, etc. Second would be to disable the status bar, disable the notification panel and disable bottom bar of the device. This is to ensure that the end user does not get the UI to access system settings on the device. As mentioned earlier, status bar and notification panel has the access to system settings of the device. Meanwhile, there is also a good chance to access system settings via recent apps button. If you have opened system settings application before launching Sherlock, the application will be listed in recent application list and can be accessed by the end user by clicking on recent apps button. That is why it is necessary to disable bottom bar as well. Disabling the three settings we talked about will ensure the end user can have no way to launch system settings. Advancing to the next important feature, which is related to Knox features available specifically on Samsung devices. Using Knox APIs provided by Samsung, we have implemented a comprehensive collection of advanced lockdown features ranging from blocking the usage of hardware components to Android settings to user accounts to applications. If you can see the screen right now, we are navigating to enable Knox option which has various features to offer. Currently, we are seeing a trial version pop up on the device. Once it disappears, I will log into admin settings of the device using the exact same procedure I mentioned earlier. I will be entering the default password which is 0000. Here in the admin settings, I will click on Samsung Knox settings and enable Samsung Knox option. I will click on proceed and activate device administrator. Here you can see a list of Samsung Knox options. The ones which are important for advanced lockdown are disable other home screen, 
disable save more, disable factory reset, disable multi windows, wipe recent apps, disable hardware keys, disable application installation, and disable application uninstallation. Based on the deployments, admin can use these features. A very important concern while deploying devices with Sherlock is to ensure that Sherlock remains activated. Over the time, we have noticed that Sherlock is forced to give up activation due to certain hardware glitches. It is very important to verify if the device being distributed in the field do not suffer from such malfunctions. To, uh, to authenticate that the device is properly activated and the configurations are not reverting to default settings, it is suggested to reboot the device once after the device is configured. As per requirement, if the, if the activation and configuration of device doesn't persist, it is best to contact 42 guest tech support for further assistance. On the screen, you can see that we are currently on Sherlock home screen. I will tap five times on the Sherlock home screen to log into admin settings of Sherlock. Once done, I will navigate to the about screen of Sherlock. Here, you can see the activate button. I will click on it and enter the activation code I have pre-generated. Once done, I will click on activate button. There you go. The device is successfully activated. You will receive the activation code once you purchase the licenses of Sherlock from 42 Cares. It is always recommended to download the application from download section of 42 Cares website to avoid confusions while activating the device. I would like to give you an example of a customer that came to us with a very specific requirement. The customer had an e-learning software which was installed on tablets and distributed to students. The deployment involved thousands of devices, which the company wanted to be locked down to ensure that they were used only for educational purposes and not for other purposes like browsing Facebook or playing games. The customer wanted Sherlock to ensure that only educational apps were allowed on the device. Secondly, Android settings were not allowed. Instead, Wi-Fi manager was allowed so that the student could connect to their home Wi-Fi or school Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Further, they wanted to ensure that safe mode was disabled on the tablets so that students could not enter safe mode and use it to access other apps like games or social media applications. They also wanted the bottom bar to be enabled so that students could navigate back and forth through their apps. Moreover, they also wanted, wanted to allow short box within Sherlock so that students could visit only allowed educational websites. We are almost at the end of, end of our session, but before we move on to summary and QA, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight some of the salient features of Sherlock. These features are widely used by our customers across the globe. The first and prominent feature I would like to talk about is branding or customization of device using Sherlock. In Sherlock, we have features to change the wallpaper of Sherlock, change the icon of applications, etc. You can use the company logo as wallpaper in Sherlock for promotional purposes. On the screen, I will now navigate to Sherlock admin settings. I will tap five times on the screen and enter double zero double zero in the password prompt. I will further navigate to Sherlock settings and then click on wallpaper option. Here I will click on portrait wallpaper and browse through device storage for the image. 
I am clicking on gallery and selecting the image. I will click on OK. I click on done. Further, I will also change the wallpaper position. By default, it is center. I will change it to fill and save the changes. Now on Sherlock home screen, you can see that the wallpaper of the device is a 42 gas logo. Next important feature I would like to discuss about is single application mode. More and more Android tablets are being used by single by enterprises for business purposes such as advertisement kiosks, digital menus in restaurants, hotels, or for inventory management applications. Converting an Android device into dedicated purpose device with only a single application running all the time can be done with single application mode. This mode will also restrict the device from access to other features. Moving on, we understand that it might get a little tedious to configure each and every device with all these settings. However, Sherlock has an option to mask configure devices. All you have to do is configure one test device with all the Sherlock settings as per your requirement and export the settings to cloud or file or an URL. Once done, take a device on which you would like to configure Sherlock, launch Sherlock and import the settings using cloud, cloud ID or file or an URL. On the screen, you can see that I have a device which is configured with certain settings such as wallpaper and two allowed applications. Now I will enter into the admin settings by entering the default password and click on OK. I will navigate to import export settings and export the settings to cloud. I will click on export to cloud. I will select export settings to new cloud ID option. It will now generate a cloud ID using which we will be configuring other devices. There you go. You have your cloud ID, which is 92937090427. I will close this and navigate back to Sherlock home screen. I have another Samsung device here which is configured with default settings of Sherlock. Here on the Sherlock home screen, I will click on import from cloud option and enter the cloud ID that was generated. It is 92937094279427 and I will click on import. This will import the settings from cloud and apply it on the device. There you go. Both the devices are configured alike. Please note that the image you would like to set as wallpaper should be available on the destination device on which you are going to import the settings. Next very important feature is driver safety. If you have mobile workforce who are extensively on the move, like ones in logistics and shipping companies, they are expected to deliver their services on strict timeline and also use their mobile devices to access corporate communication data and resources. When these workers use mobile devices while driving to make phone calls, read or respond to emails and even glancing for updates, it could pose a serious threat to themselves, other motorists, and the organization. Solution for distracted driving can be in the form of a feature or an application that automatically disables mobile device functionality while a vehicle is moving at a certain speed. Sherlock, apart from locking down your device to only selected application, also comes with an inbuilt feature to lock the device screen completely and stop driver's interaction with device while driving beyond the recommended speed. This function works in coordination with GPS and also 
allows you to set a speed threshold for the vehicles to auto lock and restrict all device functionalities. The next feature I would like to talk about is peripheral settings. Android devices has several peripheral settings such as Wi-Fi, mobile data, camera, etc. Sherlock offers options to control all these settings. The options currently available are don't care whether the device will not restrict the functionality of peripheral unit. Second option is always on where the device will ensure that the peripheral unit is always enabled. It will stay enabled even if the end user tries to turn it off. Third option is always off where the device will ensure that the peripheral unit is always disabled. It will stay disabled even if the end user tries to turn it on. For example, you can see on the device that I'm currently on Sherlock home screen. I will navigate to admin settings using the default password. I will go to Sherlock settings and look for peripheral settings. There. You have a lot of peripheral settings listed in Sherlock settings, such as camera, Wi-Fi, mobile data, Wi-Fi hotspot, GPS, Bluetooth, etc. For example, I will consider Wi-Fi settings. I will click on it. By default, the option is always set to don't care. For demo purposes, I will, click, I will select always on option and save the settings. Now I will navigate to settings application and click on it. I will further navigate to Wi-Fi option and click on it. I will try to turn off the Wi-Fi. However, Sherlock turns it on after a few seconds. With this, we come to the end of this session. Before we conclude, I would like to give you a snapshot of summary of all the points we have covered today on the checklist for Sherlock. You can download the trial version of Sherlock from 42 Gears website and Play Store. Thank you for listening. I would now like to move on to the QA session. There are a few questions that I can see. Let me take you through them one by one. The first question I read is, I read, I read about moving application to system partition in one of your document. Why should we do that? What are the advantages of doing this? Well, that is a good question. Basically, when an application is moved to system partition, it gets special privileges for better lockdown, which also means Sherlock will persist even after factory reset of the device. Moving on, the second question I see is, <laughs> there are so many permissions to grant to Sherlock. Is there an easy way to do this? <laughs> we understand your concern. However, that is how Android works. But uh, you can automate the process using ADB scripts provided the device and the PC are connected during the configuration. You can also automate the process when enterprise agent signed by OEM platform certificate. Um, the third question is, is there any way to customize Sherlock to lo look exactly like my device home screen? Sure, you definitely can. You can use toolbar settings and wallpaper settings to achieve this requirement. Okay, guys, um, the planned time for the webinar session is over. If you have any more questions, please feel free to drop in an email at webinar at 42guess.com or visit us at www.42guess.com. I see there are a lot of other questions, but due to time constraint, I will not be able to answer them here. I will send you an email once the webinar is concluded. And with this, we come to an end of the webinar. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure being with you today.
Thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you the next time.